Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this video will be on the early church father, first century theologian, and refuter of heresies, and martyr, Saint Ignatius of Antioch. He was a disciple, of, and contemporary to, Saint John the beloved apostle, and was the second after Saint Peter on the Sea of Antioch. He is hated by the so called born again Christians nowadays, as he condemned their heresies that became widespread after the Reformation. Please watch, like, subscribe, click on the bell for updates, and enjoy. At a glance, Saint Ignatius of Antioch was a very influential theologian and martyr bishop, in the early church. He was a contemporary disciple to St. John, and was also the second successor of St. Peter, in the Holy See of Antioch. He was born around 35 AD, and was most known of his writings, that showed Christianity as a transition from a Jewish offshoot, to its own distinct identity later on. He was a marvelous Christian, with a martyr mindset, an encourager of the church, in the era of persecution, and an outstanding bishop, whose episcopacy lasted some 40 years. He was a refuter of heresies, especially that of docetism, and a preserver of the traditional dogma of the ever-virginity of the Virgin Mary. He also preserved the dogma of the real presence, both physical and divine, in the bread and wine of the Eucharist, the Communion. In other words, and in modern terms, he believed that the bread in the priest's hand, is the DNA of Christ, in which resides the divinity, which is worthy of worship. He was a confirmer of the dogma of the Trinity, and the duly composite nature of Christ, fully man and fully God without mixing, confusion, or alteration. Dividing the choir during the liturgical prayers into two parts, to alternate the prayers, was also attributed to him based on a model he saw in a vision of the angels. His teachings can be found in seven letters, that he wrote to several churches, and to Bishop Polycarp, one of the angels of the Book of Revelation. During the stops in his journey to Rome, to the Colosseum to be devoured by lions. Being attacked by two lions, he was martyred in Rome, around 107, in the Colosseum. His nobleness and courage, while facing death, caused Emperor Trajan to look with favor on Christians. After his death, he appeared to many people to console them. He is celebrated in the Oriental Orthodox Churches, the Eastern Orthodox Churches, and in the Roman Catholic Church. But to their shame, he is despised by the low Protestants, the so-called born-again Christians, that do not celebrate liturgies, nor believe in sacraments, as he believed in the real physical and divine presence of Christ's DNA in the Eucharist. Early Life Despite being an influential theologian, this bishop's early life was unknown. He was believed to have been a convert, at an early age, to Christianity. He called himself Theophorus, God-bearer. This led to the tradition that he was carried, and blessed by Christ as a toddler. An event described in the verse, unless you turn and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven, Matthew, chapter 18, verse 3. Historians say, that along with Saint Polycarp, the Bishop of Smyrna, mentioned in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, Saint Ignatius was a disciple of Saint John the Apostle. They add that he succeeded Saint Peter's successor, Bishop of Odius of Antioch. They also add that Saints Peter and John gave the people instruction to ordain him a bishop after Evodius. He was a bishop for 40 years, and proved to be an outstanding one. His episcopacy was concurrent with a few Roman emperors. During the persecution of Domitum, reigning 81 to 96 AD, he uplifted the church by prayer, fasting, encouragement and preaching. Despite the lack of a formal declaration of persecution in the relatively calmer 15 months reign of Nervus, there were still some reports of martyrdom. Yet after Nerva, came Trajan, and persecution was officially reinstated. 
years leading to his martyrdom. A legend states, that he was cross-examined by Trajan himself, who was wintering in Antioch, with questions such as these. Who are you, spirit of evil, who dare disobey my orders, and go to others on to their destruction? No one calls Theophorus a spirit of evil. The bishop replied. Who is Theophorus? He who bears Christ within him. And do we not bear within ourselves the gods who help us against our enemies? You are mistaken when you call gods, those who are no better than devils. There is but one God, who created heaven and earth and all that in them, Christ, into whose kingdom I earnestly desire to be admitted. Do you mean him, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate? Yes, the same, who by his death, has crucified both sin and its author, and who has proclaimed, that every malice of the devil, shall be trodden underfoot by those who bear him in their hearts. Do you then, asked the emperor, bear Christ within you? Yes, said Ignatius, for it is written, I will dwell in them, and will walk with them. The first, major, oldest, and most reputable ancient church historian, Eusebius of Caesarea, reported the arrest and conviction of Saint Ignatius, to be devoured by wild beasts in the Roman arena, to take place during the reign of the aforementioned Emperor Trajan. Bishop Ignatius was transferred to Rome, to then be tortured for his faith. This was unusual, because torture was expected to be performed locally, and if the Christian was a Roman citizen, he could appeal to the Emperor, who may spare his life or behead him. Despite this, Bishop Ignatius was shackled with other Christians and sent to Rome. But regardless of the reasons for the transfer, this journey proved to be a blessing for the whole church. The Journey to Rome On the way to Rome, the St. Ignatius group sailed slowly, making many stops, where it was greeted by Christians, clergy and laymen alike, from near and far. St. Ignatius' companions went directly ahead of him to Rome, and waited for him there. He was only accompanied by Deacon Phalo, and Agathippus, a close friend. In the ship, he was guarded by the Ten Leopards. He nicknamed those soldiers so, due to their brutality, which grew worse with kind treatment. In Smyrna, modern-day Izmir, Turkey, the trip stopped for some time, and Saint Ignatius befriended the local bishop, and later martyr, Saint Polycarp, who was ordained by Saint John the Apostle. There, he was met with delegations from Christians, as far as, Ephesus, Magnesia, and Trelis, all of which are cities in Asia Minor. Those delegations came to take his blessings. At Troas, where the boat stopped, Ignatius wrote letters to the Philadelphians, to the Smyrnians, and to Polycarp. From Troas, the ship sailed on to the Macedonian port of Neapolis, after which, they went to Philippi. Their group disembarked, crossing Macedonia and Epirus on foot, and took ship for the trip around Italy. In Rome When Saint Ignatius reached Rome, Roman Christians had mixed feelings, happiness to finally see him, and sadness to lose him at the Colosseum in such a terrible way. By some account, Saint Ignatius reached Rome the last day of the games, on December 20th. He was sent hastily to the arena, where two lions attacked him, and he died at once. On the way to his death, Saint Ignatius was incessantly repeating the name of the Lord Jesus Christ saying that it was inscribed in his heart. He gave a good testimony at the arena telling the Romans, Men of Rome, you know that I am sentenced to death, not because of any crime, but because of my love for God, by whose love I am embraced. I long to be with him, and offer myself to him as a pure loaf, made of fine wheat, ground fine by the teeth of wild beasts. Lions devoured most of his body except for a few bones and his heart. Which tradition explains that the name of Jesus Christ was found inscribed with letters of gold in it. 
discovered by pagans when they opened it. After his death, hearing of the courage, nobleness, and fearlessness of Saint Ignatius, Trajan's demeanor towards him, and consequently, towards all Christians, changed to that of respect. And he hence stopped the persecution. Believers saw apparitions of him in their dreams, consoling them and praying for Rome. Some relics of Saint Ignatius were buried in Antioch, near the Daphne Gate. They were then taken back to Rome in 637 AD, to the Church of Saint Clementi. He is celebrated on October 17th according to the Syriac tradition. He is celebrated on December 20th in the Eastern Orthodox Church. He is celebrated on January 4th, in the Coptic and Ethiopian churches. He was celebrated by saints and theologians, the likes of Saint John Chrysostom and Saint Jerome. His letters, dogmas and liturgical practices. During his trip to Rome, to be martyred, he wrote seven letters, of encouragement and exhortation, to various churches to be dispatched to them. He asked them to be obedient to church hierarchy, being just one bishop per diocese, assisted by priests and deacons. He considered unity with the bishop as unity with Christ the ultimate bishop. He exhorted the Christians to be Christ-like, in the face of affliction and suffering, by not fighting back and seeking revenge. Fulfilling this himself, he entreated Christians in Rome not to do anything to stop his martyrdom. He attributed his desire of martyrdom, as a desire to be united with Christ and his suffering. He also warned against the Docetic heresy, that stated that Christ's suffering was not real, just appeared so. Explaining that without the suffering of Christ, salvation would be meaningless. He stressed the virginal birth of the Blessed Virgin Mary, as well as the Christian Trinity, three persons same in essence, as the one Christian God. He also described the nature of Christ as, fully God, i.e. with the divinity of the Father equal to that of His Son in all respects, and as fully man. Furthermore, he stressed the fact that the bread and wine in the communion are not merely a sign, but are the real flesh and blood of Jesus Christ. In other words, if you want to describe in modern medical terms, he equated the communion bread and wine, to the divine DNA, i.e., DNA of the flesh in which the divinity reside. He referred to the Eucharist, communion, as the, the flesh of Christ, the gift of God, and the medicine of immortality. Not only this, but he went as far as condemning those that abstained from the liturgy, to not receive communion, due to denying the real divine presence in it as hell-bound heretics. They who deny the gift of God, the communion, are perishing in their disputes," said Saint Ignatius in his letter to the Smyrnians. He affirmed, some say introduced, the use of the word Catholic, meaning universal in Greek, to refer to the Church in general, not just a locality such as the Sea of Rome, or that of Alexandria. Hence that term was not confined to the Roman Church. This term was later borrowed in the Nicene Creed. One must not forget, that he was among the first theologians to change slash call for the change of the Sabbath, from Saturday, to the Lord's Day on Sunday. The division of the church choir, in two parts that reply to each other, aka antiphonal singing, is attributed to him, as the angelic pattern seen by him in a vision. Preservations of the Letters the first attempt to preserve the entire seven letters of Saint Ignatius, was undertaken by Saint Polycarp, who then sent them to the Church of Philippi, as was requested by the Philippians. Those letters known to early church historians are now firmly considered as genuine. Brothers and sisters, this concludes the biography of Saint Ignatius. Please watch, comment, like, share, Click on the bell for updates, subscribe, and first and foremost, enjoy. Glory be to our God, forever and ever. Amen.